Hello everyone, this is Brock Skaggs. I'm going to make this video where we're going to look at using the method of joints to solve for first the axial forces carried by each member of the truss, and then we're also going to solve for the normal stresses, and also we're going to look at finding the reactions at A and E here. And so what we have is a cantilever style truss, you can see, uh, fairly small, looks like it's got seven individual members there, uh, five joints. Uh, joint A here is a idealized pin connection, joint E is a roller on a vertical surface there. Uh, we've got a few dimensions here. L1 are the links of members 1, 4, and 3. L2 is the vertical length of uh, 5 and 7. Uh, those values are 6 feet and 4 feet for L1 and L2 respectively. As far as cross sections going, um, I'm just going to take a standard square tubing, 2 inch by 2 inch nominally by a quarter inch wall thickness there. Uh, and this is actually a weldment profile that I'm getting from SolidWorks. Just one of the things we'll do after I solve this thing theoretically is just show the numerical solution from SolidWorks and show that those match up. Uh, material, um, ASTM A36 steel. E value modulus of elasticity right about 29 times 10 to the 6 psi, and the yield strength right around 36,000 psi. Uh, those aren't really important for what we're doing in this video, uh, but I plan on making follow-on videos where I'd probably need at least the E value in there if I wanted to look at things like a deflection of a specific joint. Uh, finally, the load that's applying to the truss, you can see is at point C there, vertical direction, uh, straight downward with a magnitude of 5,000 pounds, and we'll call that P. And so again, what are we after? Um, task number one here is to determine the reactions at joints A and E, and two is to determine the normal stresses experienced by each truss member. And even though this is going to end up in my mechanics and materials playlist on YouTube, uh, really this is mainly a statics problem. The vast majority of the, majority of the work we're going to do here is related to statics, and then we're just really just putting a little icing on the cake, so to speak, by calculating the normal stresses, which is a mechanics and materials area there. And so with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump right in here. And so first thing we're going to do, I'm going to start at number one, determine the reactions at A and E. And so I need to know the reactions happening at the pin joint at A and the roller at E here. And so well, probably the easiest way to do that is to draw a free body diagram. And so the question is, okay, what's my free body diagram going to be of? And well, for me, it's going to be of the entire truss itself. And so we're going to separate the entire truss from its supports from the pin connection at A and the roller at E. And so that'll be what I draw down here. And so here we go, free body diagram. This is of the entire truss. Usually I like to give myself some clue of what my diagram is of here, just as a benefit to myself. And so if I'm looking at the entire truss, I really am not caring too much about the members that make up the interior of it. And so I'm just going to draw this trapezoidal shape here and not worry about drawing all the things that are happening inside. And so if this is my truss outline, what forces is it going to experience? Well, the obvious one is I've got this downward force here that we called P, which was 5,000 pounds. That's the externally applied load. Say this truss is trying to pick something up with. And then what else do we have? Well, let's look at the reactions. And the reactions are going to be accompanied with joints A and E here, where this thing's attached to, say, some rigid wall. And I'll start at E. Well, E is a roller on a vertical surface. Um, hopefully you remember for rollers that they have a component of the reaction force, or the entire reaction force, really, is always perpendicular to the surface that the roller is rolling on. So this thing's rolling on a vertical surface. That means the reaction it's going to produce is a force that's in the horizontal direction. And I am, at this point going to just draw that force off into the right. Here I'm not spending a whole lot of time thinking about it. I'm just going to make an assumption and knowing that if I assume wrong, the algebra will produce a negative value and that's how I'll get the right direction. And I'll call that E sub X. Now I'll come up here to joint A. Uh, joint A is a pin joint, so it's got two components that we usually talk about, a horizontal and vertical component of the re reaction force associated with it. And so I'm just going to call that an A sub X and A sub Y and just point the arrows initially in the usual direction for the positive axes here. So there's a sub x, there's a sub y. Um, if I haven't said it at this point, I'm basically assuming this is the positive x and that's the positive y as far as directions go. 
Uh, at this point, taking one more peek up to my diagram here and comparing it with my free body diagram, it does look like the free body diagram is now complete at this point. And so the only thing I'm going to add to it is a few dimensions here. Uh, so this was 2L1 at the bottom, so this span down here is 12 feet, and this span here vertically is 4 feet there, just because I've got two L1s and one L2 going vertically. So now we're ready to start writing equilibrium equations. Um, we've got a nice free body diagram drawn here, and so now we've got three unknowns, right, a sub x, a sub y, and e sub x, and we need to determine those magnitudes, and that's basically what we're looking for in task one. And so with that, um, I'll go ahead and write my equilibrium equations. I'm going to start off with some of the forces. Uh, let's start off with some of the moments, actually. And I'm going to say, let's take the sum of the moments about point A. Um, really, I've got three different equilibrium equations I could write here, right? Some of the moments about some point, some of the forces in the X, and some of the forces in the Y. And so here, I'm just going to write the sum of the four moments about point A first. Uh, that should allow me to solve for this E sub X. And so if I write some of the moments about point A, uh, here is point A, just to emphasize that. And we've got A sub X and A sub Y, the components of the reaction force associated with the pin joint. Notice they go right through that point A that I'm trying to take the moments about. And so those will not enter into my moment equation. If I go right down below it though I have E sub X. Notice it has a line of action of that force going horizontally down here. It doesn't go through the point that I'm taking the moment about and so it is going to have a component related to it in this equilibrium equation. And so I need the force, we'll call that E sub X, times the perpendicular distance if you will. That's the four feet. So there's my four feet. Uh, it's trying to cause counterclockwise rotation and so that's where I've got this sign convention ironed out here that anything that's trying to cause counterclockwise rotation is going to be a positive input into my moment equation and so here's the rotation point you can think of it as and it's going to the right which is going to cause this counterclockwise rotation that direction there and that's why it's positive input into the formula or into our equation. Uh, next we've got P over here. Um, obviously its line of action does not intercept the point A, so it will be here. Also looking at sine, it's going downward and, to the, and it's to the right of my moment equation. So as you can see my cursor hopefully there, it is trying to cause clockwise rotation. So it's going to be negative. So minus P times the overall distance, that is the 12 feet. And we'll set that equal to zero because we are thinking this thing's in static equilibrium. Uh, so now I'm ready to solve for E sub X. And so here we would have E sub X is equal to P, and then you'd have 12 feet over 4 feet. Well, that's essentially 3P. Units cross off there. Uh, and so we're left with just the unit of force. And so I've got 3 times 5,000 pounds, essentially, at this point. And we'll call that 15,000 pounds. That's a positive value as well. And so that means E sub X is indeed pointing to the right. Our initial assumption for the direction of the force has been confirmed by the positive value coming out of our equilibrium equation. Uh, so now we've got one of the unknowns done. We've got two more left, A sub X and A sub Y. And so let's go ahead and write the some of the forces in the X. Uh, some of the forces in the x direction. Again, thinking positive x goes to the right. And so here we'd have a sub x plus e sub x are the only things moving in the horizontal direction and they're both going to the right. And so here we'd have our a sub x here plus our e sub x. And we know it's in static equilibrium, so it's got to equal zero. Well, now we can solve for a sub x. a sub x is equal to negative e sub x. So same magnitude, opposite in sign. And E sub X was 15,000 pounds, so A sub X is negative 15,000 pounds. Just like so. Uh, so what that's telling us is A sub X is actually pointed to the left and not to the right. And so um, you just have to make sure you understand what the negative sign means here with respect to your 
initial assumptions you've been making when drawing your free body diagram. Finally, we need to solve for a sub y. That'll come from our equilibrium equation from the sum of the forces in the y direction or the vertical direction. So there's my sum of the forces in the y, taking a positive being upward. As you can see on my free body diagram, I have a sub y pointing up, p going down, so at a sub y minus p. Other forces are only moving in the horizontal direction, so they don't enter in, so I can set that equal to zero. Now I have a sub y is equal to p, which is equal to our 5,000 pounds here. And uh, that looks good at this point. I'll just take a different color and kind of underline the results. Uh, 15,000 pounds for E sub X, it is going to the right. The negative 15,000 pounds for A sub X means the magnitude is 15,000 pounds, but A sub X is actually pointing to the left. And A sub Y is indeed going upward and has a magnitude of 5,000 pounds. Uh, since this video is already at 11 minutes, um, I think I'm going to break this video up or this problem up into multiple YouTube videos. So in this one, I'm just basically completing task one, determine the reactions at joints A and E. Uh, one thing I'd like to do before I close this video off, though, is kind of show you the SolidWorks simulation version of this. And so that's what I'm bringing across to the screen now. And so what I've done is I've modeled up uh, the truss we're talking about in SolidWorks, ran in simulation, but I'm interested in showing you guys not the stress plot that I have here, uh, but I want to list the result forces. And so notice here I have the ability to show the reaction forces. Um, I'll go ahead and change this to English units, set up IPS, and I'm going to select these two joints on the far left where it's actually held in place with the fixtures. And so here are the results. Um, it's not in floating point notation, but it's more scientific notation here. Uh, but hopefully you can see that, okay, here is the point E for us. Uh, this was the roller. I uh, noticed it only has a reaction force in the X direction or in the horizontal direction, which is what we expected, away from our vertical wall, which is over here. And notice the magnitude here, 1.5 times 10 to the fourth pound force is what that is. Uh, that's 15,000 pounds moving off to the right, which is exactly what we said here, right? E sub X was pointed to the right, positive 15,000 pounds. Uh, let's look at the pin joint now. And so going back into SOLIDWORKS here. Uh, first, the horizontal component of the pin joint, this F sub X, is the red arrow here, negative 15,000 pounds. And it's negative because they've got it pointing off into the left. That's exactly what we said here. Um, I assumed it was going to the right, got a negative value here, and so we said it was 15,000 pounds moving to the left. Uh, so we're in a good agreement there. Uh, some of the force in the Y, it says it's positive 5,000 pounds with the green arrow pointing up. And coming back here, that matches with our A sub Y is equal to P statement here. 5,000 pounds also pointing up because our arrow was pointed up in our free body diagram. F sub Z is negligible. Uh, notice it's times 10 to the negative 14th there. Uh, so it's essentially no movement in the Z direction, which is what we expect from this uh, planar 2D problem. And so our SOLIDWORKS result is matching quite nicely with our theoretical result we're getting at just by looking at the reaction forces. And so I think I'll quit this video at this point. Um, I'll call this something like video A and then video B and so on and so forth uh, in order to have them have different names in YouTube there. Uh, but thank you for watching the video. Uh, hopefully this helps you uh, get started on your trust problems and then I'll make a continuation video where we'll tackle task two.